All right, so now that you know the, the basics of Corel Draw, vector design, how fills and outlines work, how nodes work, the connections between nodes, let's actually get into what you're going to be doing, which is designing some cool vector art. Um, this right here is obviously the Batman logo. I just pulled it offline and obviously you can tell that it is a bitmap because as I zoom in, it gets all pixelated. I want to create this in a vector because I want to create a uh, maybe a high resolution version of it or maybe I want to do a vinyl cut of it or I want to get it embroidered or something like that. So once you bring your image into Corel Draw, the first thing you need to do is lock that image. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to choose uh, lock object. This just means I can't grab onto it and it won't get in my way. So I need to identify where all the nodes are and I'm just going to show you really quickly using a, uh, a shape here and I'll just put a, a blue circle here. There's obviously going to be a node right there, there's going to be a node right there, there's going to be a node down there, there, and um, if you're wondering how I know where these nodes are, well, that just comes from experience. I know that there's only going to be a certain number of nodes. You want to keep the number of nodes as low as possible. You don't want to put too many in there because then your, your object's going to get kind of complicated. So I can do this entire Batman logo in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 nodes. So I need to know that that is what I'm going to start with. So I'm just going to delete those now. Oh, I should also mention, you know that the connection between these two nodes is a curve. You know that between those two nodes is a curve. You know that between those two nodes is actually a straight. And then these are a straight, straight. And then this is a curve again. So that's where that, that uh, lesson we did about uh, the connections between nodes becomes important. Okay, now that I know where my nodes are, I'm going to use the Bezier tool. It's the fifth tool down. You hold it down and choose Bezier. It is a Oh, it's, it's the best tool we're going to use. It can be used for everything. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to click one time on each of the node locations. So I'm going to go click, 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 etc. on all the locations that I know there needs to be a node. Now by default, the Bezier tool puts a straight line connection between the nodes. Um, when you get to the last node, or in this case the second last, you have to go back up to where you started and click on it. So now what's happened is I've actually created the basic structure of the Batman logo but in line or sorry in, in uh, straight connection form and that's okay. So I'm gonna lay it back where it was and I don't really like the black color of this because I'm doing this on black already so I'm gonna right click and maybe choose this green color and if you remember I can go up here and increase the width. I'll make it about three. This will this will work really well for tracing. So let me just get it lined up again. Okay, I'm going to do one connection at a time. So I'm going to now go over to my shape tool. So the shape tool right here is what's going to give you all the power. Let's start with a pretty, uh, pretty easy one. Actually, these ones up here are already done. You can see that it's a straight, straight, straight connection. Well, what about this one here, this big loop? Well, this connection here needs to become a curve instead of a straight. So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to choose to curve. And from there, I can actually just grab the line itself and pull it down. Now, obviously that is not the right shape yet, but I brought it down to the bottom. What you need to do is use the handles. So I'm going to click on the node right there, right before it, and I can just grab this handle and I can kind of move it around a little bit until it kind of lines up. It's not too bad. Then I'm going to grab this handle. And again, try to make it line up. And you're going to keep moving those handles until you kind of, kind of get the general shape. And you might have to move them up and down a little bit. It does take some practice. Like even right now, I'm not doing a great job of this. But I can move the line a little bit. If you're ever really struggling, you can put in another line, or sorry, another node, and that may help you a little bit. But generally, we try to avoid it. We try to keep the, low, the node, node number as low as possible. Okay, now I might come back to that. It's not great right now, but it's kind of, it's enough to get me going. I'm going to then take the next connection, which is going from this node to this node. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to choose curve. I'm going to drag it out. That one actually fits really nice. I'm going to click this node right here. And because it's a cusp, I can grab this handle, move it up. I can grab this node and move that out. That actually fits really nice. 
And then this one, of course, is going to be a curve. So I'll drag that up. And just kind of mess around with it a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to pause for a second. And uh, I'm just going to finish them up. And then uh, once they're all done, I'll come back and show you how to finish off this whole logo. All right, I think I've finished mine here. Now, um, if this is the first trace you're doing, you're probably getting frustrated with the handles, especially in these really, really deep ones here up at the top. Um, it just takes some practice. You will get it. And to be honest, the Batman one, it's not the easiest one to do, but it's a really good one to get you going. Now, at this point, I have now created this. So this is a vectored image of the Batman logo. And actually, I think it looks pretty good. I can now click on the black to fill it. And this is the, one of the biggest mistakes people make with, uh, with vectoring is they forget to get rid of the outline. There is no outline on that Batman. Okay, so I have to right click on the X up here and that gets rid of it. So now I've got the Batman logo and it's looking pretty good. However, I still need to get the other part here. So there's a few ways to do it. Um, maybe the easiest way is, let me take the ellipse, and I'm gonna try to make an ellipse that is the same size as the yellow inside. And I can just, once I've made it, I can go up to my uh, pick tool at the top here, and I can kind of squish it down a bit until I get it perfect. And again, it's hard to see the line, so you may wanna change the, uh, the color or the uh, fill, or the size on it, I should say. That's not too bad there. And I'm gonna make that yellow, okay? So I'm gonna put that over here. Now the problem is, well there's two problems. Number one, the yellow has a black outline. So let's right click the X, so that's gone. And it is in front of the Batman logo. And if you've got your object manager up, you can see that the ellipse that I just made is above the curve, which is Batman. So easiest way to do it, right click the curve, the, in this case the ellipse, the yellow one, and just choose the order and send it to the back of the page. You could also put it at the back of the layer or just back one level, but I'll just do it to the back of the page. Okay, you can see it's not perfect yet. I might wanna use the arrow keys to kinda of move it around. There's other tools that'll align it perfectly, but for now that's okay. And then last thing I need to do is I need to get the black um, outline around there. So I'm going to take the ellipse tool again. I'm gonna start up here and just trace around it. And if I need to, I'll use the pick tool and I'll just lower it, get it to be the exact size that I want. That's pretty good. Make it black in this case. And I'm gonna lay it on top there. Obviously it's gonna go completely black again, so I need to right click it, order, send to the back of the page. Now. This first one, I'm gonna unlock it and I'm just gonna move it up a little bit because I wanna keep it there so I can compare it. And in fact, when you do any traces um, in this unit, I want you to keep the original there so we can compare them. And already just eyeballing it, that looks pretty good actually. So I've managed to take a logo, which is not great resolution and create a vectored image. Now when we go up to view and we go to wireframe, you can see that there's a big difference. This is just showing the pixely version. This means that every different color has been cut out properly into its own shape. If I were to send this to the vinyl cutter, it's gonna cut that perfectly. I'll go back to the enhanced mode. And what I might do to finish things off, I might just select the whole thing, right click it and choose group objects. And now you can see it puts them all together in one group. So I hold it, and it's a group of three objects. I can move it around, I can make it smaller, I can do whatever I want with it. One warning, when you have a grouped object, if you click a color, it's gonna make everything in that group that color. So just be careful of that. So to practice this now, um, what I would suggest, do some superhero logos. Just do a search for superhero logos or you can use these. I've put up uh, Green Lantern, The Flash, Captain America, Thor, and Wonder Woman. They're not overly difficult, but they will give you the practice that you need in terms of converting uh, something into a vector and really using those nodes to help you out. Okay, if you have any questions, obviously ask. Otherwise, you're good to go.